I would like to procure the bag. I want to be a rich bitch. Penthouse door man. Money, 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 rich bitch. Hey, hey, give me that bag. Rich bitch. You're so rich. Uh, pay me. Exactly. Oh, oh, she's on. Um, but yeah, like it's like how I do, I'm Charles. I just hit record. I just hit record at any random yes, spot. He's a, he's a and we're going. Like, <laughs> that's he's why like, our that's why our conversation with Davon was two hours long. <laughs> yeah, we're like we're in. We're Sorry. in. I'm gonna be like no. asking for your help with all this tech, Ed, because like I am such a grandpa. I look like I'm so <laughs> fancy right now with my boom arm mic and my it looks my great top yeah. screen, my six screen, my swish screen, ah, uh, Cicero lip shit screen. <laughs> ah, I don't know. I don't know where I got this shit. People just recommended me, and I was like, I will take. I don't know yeah. how to do any tech. And I mean, it I looks great. It sounds. It looks great. It sounds like, great. You know. Yeah. No, it looks great. <laughs> sounds great feels great no um, notes no notes at all no Thank notes you. at all no notes at all but yes we have i have my weird rickety setup here for like my self tapes and all my like uh studio stuff i have my studio lights set up but you would never know it just looks like i'm in my bedroom <laughs> work that work oh that. my god well really really quick before we go completely off the rails because again like Let's david go. said like i'm the Whoopi goldberg here um <laughs> is that the person uh, who keeps you on the rails or the one that's high making a turkey at Thanksgiving? maybe both kind of okay. both i feel like it's okay. both um but for our listeners this is the charles osborne who's a very good friend of mine love him dearly la now la in native now not la native what am i talking about living in la is what i meant to say <laughs> la colonizer is what you right. meant to say. Oh, right right right, right. Yeah, yeah. new to la um maybe you've probably seen him on the tickety talks mm-hmm. and um we're just like thrilled to have you here i just you're one of my favorite humans <laughs> i love you ed and i'm so happy to be here and i'm so happy for all of your success you published all author you were incredible oh my you're goodness the damn thing thank you yes there are things happening and um you know we, we can get into it but not not here because this is all about you this is about you this is about yes. the charles osborne and so well, that for is those what... of you listening to my dulcet tones i just want mm. you to know that i dress to match the custom mural behind me on my wall because i am what yeah. broke but bougie Sickening. I think I think that's a podcast in the making. Broken bougie. Broken, Broken bougie. bougie. Yeah. I'm sure it's already one. I'm sure. Oh, 100. Yeah. If it's I mean, not, it just got me when they heard. Listen, this. life is an right. occasion. Show up for it. I agree. Right. I had a jacket that from Amazon that matched the background. <laughs> I think it's giving me a rash. It's so cheaply made, but you know what? It's insane. <laughs> I mean, you look great. So it's polyester. Okay. <laughs> polyester. Yeah, polyester yeah, yeah. is a um stretch. Oh, work, it's... work. Yeah, it was made by a girl named Polly and Esther. So we're good. Yeah, um yeah. Pe- peaking of speaking peaking of stretch. Wow. <laughs> I'm failing on the word. Whoopi, are week. you are you having, are you high already? Whoopi? Am I having a stroke? I've just been like really not good with the talking this week. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> if you watch any of our TikToks or Instagram reels, you'll see that I'm unable to form words. Um That's great. anyway, Podcast. Charles, Ch- Charles, tell me about all the things that you're doing. What is oh, going on? God, yeah, uh, so many things. So many things. Um, well, so a lot of people know me from TikTok, from doing sketch comedy, things like that. My uh, handle on all platforms is a star Osborne. Get mm. it? <laughs> Title of podcast uh, episode. Right. Um, but I, uh, but so, so, so I'm still working on that and I'm working on something really big that I hope to actually premiere on partly on TikTok. I'm working right now on recording my first comedy album because Drumroll, please. Everybody sort of knows me as this comedian, but I know me as an opera librettist. <laughs> like I write, I co-write operas and musicals, and I also perform as a like actor, you know, like live and yeah. on stage shows. And so it's really been a sort of disorienting switch for me to like sort of be like, oh, I'm a comedian now. Like I maybe maybe I'm a really crazy character. Damn, maybe I should start writing for myself. So I'm finally all synthesizing all of this together in a comedy album that is also a real live musical. And wow. I think I'm just putting this. it on TikTok one by one because it's really like TikTok 
friendly. It's really social media friendly the way that the thing is organically designed. And at least part one is, so I'll put part one online. And part two, you have to see live. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I love oh, that. Get, will, the, will you, get like... the children in the seats, obviously. Yeah. yeah. No, we'll, not the children. We'll... This is adults only. Okay, get those <laughs> adults clear. in that seat. Yeah, no children. No. no children. Right. Okay. Charles Osborne, Children's Theater officiant. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't put it out in the universe. No. Uh, no. no, it's fine. No. <laughs> this is not the podcast for that, so don't worry. No, don't yeah. worry. Don't worry about it. <laughs> We're good. So, are are you going to be wonderful. touring part one, two, one as well, and or just part two? Well, I'm going to be recording part one. Part two is is something that can only be done live. I'm not going to say more, but it can only be experienced live, wow. and that's entirely by design. So, part one is designed for social media and live, um, and part two is designed that so that it just literally cannot possibly be done on social media so um so it's just sort of this diametric opposition between these two things and it's called charlie clown one and two um and it's the first time i've ever written about myself or for myself mm -hmm. beyond like five or ten minutes of stand-up so it's but i've been you know a writer for 10 12 years now writing like I said, operas and plays and like verse and and uh, all kinds of like comedy things that I was doing in nightclubs in New York, but mm. I never considered like looking at my own life and actually examining my own self and writing for that. And I was like, I don't think I just want to make this like a stand up bit. I think I I think I understand things as like, how can I make this for other people? So I'm like, I I'm using this as like a comedy album for myself to be like, I'm the first one to play it, but I'm also designing it to be for like any sort of queer misfit to to take this and lip sync for your life and do an amazing musical. So it's 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 a very strange synthesis that I'm sort of doing and it sounds like I'm completely stoned and maybe I am, you'll never know. But oh, maybe <laughs> I am too, you'll also never know. But, but... but this, is, this is something I've been working on for a long time and I'm very excited about it because I'm finally in the last stages and I'm just, you know, anyway. It sounds like you're following like your bliss. You're following like your what you're being drawn to. You're not afraid to like. I love that because you're basically being unafraid to like invest in yourself and your story and things that draw you in, and that's going to draw in an audience that really resonates with you. You know, they they always say from the specific you get the universal. Yeah. And um, over the last year, I've sort of had like a a or last. 2022 was a very interesting wake up call for me because like, like I said, like I was trying to say earlier, like the, the, the low level fame that has come from TikTok is disorienting to me because I'm spending all my day as a professional actor and a professional writer, like doing really complicated shit. And then I just sort of like throw off a TikTok and then I'm like, wait, what? Like... <laughs> I'm getting recognized on the street for this. I was like, what? And then anyway, so like, so th that was sort of checking in for me going like, wait, am I really that crazy of a character? Like what? And I thought I was normal. Look at me. <laughs> I'm only matching my mural. Um, <laughs> Look at all of us. Yeah. We're seems normal to me. I did I mean... <laughs> then I did a reality show last year. I can't say what it is yet, but it's coming out very soon. And I, I <gasps> am so excited. I, it's, it, it's coming out very soon, but I can't say what it is. It was the most fun I've ever had in my life. But there was this point in the filming where I was like, man, these people are the hottest messes in America. <laughs> and then I was like, yeah, Charles, and all the cameras are on you. So what does that say about you? So I was like, um, maybe I should start writing for myself <laughs> and like examining how this came to be. And so, yes. so, so I'm, it's just been a very strange journey for me to go, oh, maybe, maybe I can make it as like a comedian or a comic who just is this insane character. I mean, who knew? I am dressed to match my mural. Who knew? I mean, I love, love it. But also, but also like in marketing world, that's kind of 101. Like the idea of small businesses, like when it, it's always like if you, when you speak to everyone, you speak to no one because no one then knows that you're speaking to them. And so like a lot of times the way that we flip that on its head for like smaller brands that I'm working with is like, who are you? What do you want? And like, who, who is, how have you like benefited from what it is that you're doing? And then being able to find those people that would also benefit from whatever you've done. So, I mean, for you, I mean, you and I are very, very much on the same kind of trajectory here where we've written something about ourselves or in the process of doing so. And it's like mm -hmm. taking off and doing things. And like, I mean, I have no doubt in my mind that whatever this, the Charlie Clown situation is going to be like, you know. <laughs> 
on Netflix in two seconds just because like why wouldn't it be I mean you're one of the most entertaining people I know and like thank you you know and she's like this off camera too guys (laughs) (laughs) you can't make this up like I just I but that's my favorite part it's because like watching your watching your TikToks it's like yep there he is (laughs) well that was the thing is that like I'm I'm such a grandpa like like I I don't use social media as much as you think. Like I my friends made me an Instagram on my 25th birthday. They were like you have to get on this, you idiot. Like <laughs> everyone just just get on it. I'm like, "Well, do it for me. I can't with the new fangled tech, you know." <laughs> and then everybody was like, this is just like how I talk. And I'm always just like jumping into sketch comedy things. They're like Jennifer Curlett's just like off the cuff, you know. Just mid conversation, and yeah. people were like, "Why aren't you on TikTok?" And I'm like, "I can't with the tech and the newfangled and these whippers." <laughs> and now, and now, look where you're at. Yeah, yeah. It's so insane. like, it's crazy. Like everybody has been pushing me in the directions that I apparently should have been going all well, along because I, mean, that, I don't know what to do with myself. But that, to me, that that's such a lucky thing to have that you have friends that care about you enough and see yes. you see you for who you are enough that they do push you in that direction. Yeah, that's, like that's, that's such that's such a rich bitch quality, as we say here, mm-hmm. is being surrounded by like you know people who care about you and want the best for you. Like there, that's that's so much wealth that you don't have. And I think I talk, I've mentioned this before on another podcast, I think, but not this one, where like during the pandemic, I was so lucky that I had my closest friends nearby during shutdown so that I could go see them. And I'd mentioned that to another friend of mine and they were like, you're so lucky. Like, I don't know anybody who has that. And I was like, what mm. do you mean? Like, you don't have friends to check in with? And they were like, no. Like I, like everyone's disappeared and it just made me so sad. So the fact that you have that within the, like the pod of people that you travel with, that they are, Mm -hmm. they care about you enough to push you in directions and want to see you be successful. That's a rarity. And I, it's so easy to take for granted because a hundred percent I have, because I just assume everyone has this, but they don't. And so feel super lucky to to have that. I got to be honest. I was literally just thinking about that this morning. I think about this often. I I'm I always think I'm like I I have a very big pause for effect personality. Oh, um, oh, okay. How but dare I have it's a visual. Zero... It's a it's an it's an audio medium. It's not hey, a... <laughs> um, but I have like zero self confidence. Like honestly, like mm. I I'm I'm like a major overachiever. But like I have to have evidence in order to have confidence. Ah, yeah, I get that. I have to like oh I oh got the achievement or I've got so I've same. proved I've proved myself to myself. Like I can't just innately have it. Isn't so, that so stupid? Like, it why is do so we do stupid. That? It's so not healthy. Not doctor yeah. recommended. Four out no. of five dentists do not recommend this. Re- do not. Um, yeah, do not. Yeah. But I am surrounded by friends who believe in me more than I believe in myself oh. and family and teachers along the way who have even uh, have sometimes been hard, you know, but, but a lot of times have been like the strength that I needed in my darkest moments who to go, no, I believe in you when you don't believe in yourself. And I'm so grateful for that. It is it's so lucky, so important to have people in your life like that and to be that for other people that you truly believe in like well, you it have is, that's have, that's a two-way the reciprocity of it you have for to have sure it. and, and sure. no person is an island especially when it comes to not just you holistically but as an artist when you're creating something like you can't just it's not you by yourself you need no. these people around you to keep you going to inspire you to push you to do the right things um uh, i made a series uh, a few years back that got on amazon that had about I don't know how many people involved I think and set eventually like 50 or so and to go from something that was in my head to something that was like in a set I never would have done without my partner in crime Lindsay Elizabeth Hand producer extraordinaire in New York City um but we need these people in our lives that push us farther than say hey I think this is something really great that could even be bigger than what you have let's make this happen and I think that's wonderful that you already know like who you are, of course, but now you're also saying like, look, I'm open to everyone uplifting me as I uplift them. That's wonderful. It's fantastic. And And Sarah and I talk about this a lot, just like in in life, not necessarily with a microphone in front of our face, but like the idea of like making it on your own or like, you know, overnight success or any of that, like all of that (laughs) is such a lie, you know, like, especially if you look at the people that, that, that we, that I talk about, that we talk about, like, 
you know, the ones, and I actually think Charles, the last time you were in the city, we talked about this walking around where like you have people like Judd Apatow and Tyler Perry and Shonda Rhimes who like are famous because they created their own things and they had a team of people around them and those same people that they use in all of their projects because like, yes, they recast so many wonderful people. And like looking at that from an outsider's perspective, you're like, they're just hiring their friends. They're not actually giving anyone else a chance. And I don't think that that's necessarily true. There's like a 50, 50 duality to it where it's like you can discover people in projects and still also use the same core people that you trust and know and can rely on to be there for you in projects because whether you're you know Judd Apatow or Sarah Seeds or me or you you know like every project starts the same and so you want it to be the best it can be and if that means hiring people you know and trust who are also your friends or in your orbit then like of course you're going to do that yeah I and I want to comment on all of that um, do it do it <laughs> okay one there is no such thing as overnight success if Never. you have no. success overnight you are an oat you are truly. an overnight oat truly and you need like you know what i mean like you're not a human that's not real also no, nobody makes it on their own we live in a society at some point someone has to say yes even if that's your customer Right. Someone 100%. has to say yes for you to be a success, no matter who you are. We all have to work together in some way, even when you're like very alone. But I also want to distinguish between the kind of like group that you guys are talking about, which is professional collaborators, and what I am talking about, which is is an emotional support system. Sure. That's what, like they don't what? have to like you don't if you can find those people who you can collaborate with and have an emotional support system. I have that with my friend Leo Hurley, he's my best friend and he's the most gorgeous composer. It's just, his music is like somewhere between Bernstein and Debussy. I swear to God, he's just <laughs> this I love wunderkind. Um, uh, uh, but we like speak the same language and co- collaborate really well. And like he and I are each other's support system uh, so well away from projects. Um, and yes. right now I'm working on projects completely by myself for the first mm-hmm. time. And I still have that support system from him emotionally and from other friends emotionally who can't do anything for my career, but can do something to keep me going emotionally, personally in the dark time. So like you sure. do need both. You like, you and if you can have it overlap, 100%. great. But well, like, and I don't, I don't necessarily see them as separate because whether or not yeah. like, whether or not your best friends are like on set with you or collaborating with you or not, their otherwise support keeps you going in that direction. So yeah, like, 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 like Lindsay's my best friend, right. uh, my partner, Michael in life is uh, also a collaborator of mine. You know, it's like uh, my mom, you know, just supported me from day one. It's like, there's certain people in your life that you're just like, uh, you know, they always keep you going. And those are the people you want to keep around you all the yeah. time. Like my sisters, yeah. like they, they want nothing to do with like television stuff or whatever. No. They don't care, but they are so supportive of me and like reach out and like ask me how I'm doing. They want to know about my things. And so it's like that really nice overlap of having like the emotional support, but then also the professional support. Mm-hmm. And I kind of don't think it's helpful. And I mean, everyone's different. This is just me. I'm just speaking to me to separate them because then yeah. I feel like you're creating a duality for your brain. That's not necessarily my brain hates, hates multiple things. <laughs> <laughs> it needs to make everything the same. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, because it's like we we have all these different human beings in our lives and it's we probably give so much we don't even know to them um, in so many different ways. So it's yeah, to me, it's like almost like a a, a blurred line a lot of the time. I, like, I um, friendships are extremely important to me in my life because I was like a very lonely kid. And so I really, really mm. valued them. And the, the, the biggest regrets in my lives are times where like I was horrible like like in my youth you know like when you're like oh never making that mistake again to a friend you know like but um so it's very like you said it's very important to 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 build relationships for real for the sake of the relationship not what you get out of it because Mm -hmm. you you need people more than you need success like oh my god yeah like we need each other and the pandemic lord knows taught us that la has taught me that because i am hella lonely you know <laughs> to borrow a phrase from the native california um, yeah but yeah like we, we, need, we need yeah. people um for for sure uh i yeah. forgot where i was going with that because i derailed 
my train of thought. No, which... you're you're fine. It, it you're totally fine. The sense. train's still on the track. I <laughs> wanted to ask you though about um, you know, your process when you're creating something. It seems like you know you're doing all sorts of different things. Do you have a certain process you like to do, or what? It, how do you get inspired to create, and what is your process? When I'm writing something, like it's always research. Like I am, I am a history nerd and I love, I find, so a lot of the things that I write are based in history or, or, uh, or is something that I had to learn about. And I, and I never know where a story is going to go. Like, I don't think that you should, if you're going to start out like with writing something, I think, I think investigate, investigate before you build the plot honestly like like just see what's there and listen with just listen to your subjects and just listen without a plan listen to what they have to say that's what i think about it so i will do years of research where to me i'm just listening and i'm like hmm that's really cool put a pin in that well you know that reminds me of that thing that i read over there put a pin in that and put a pin in that put a pin in that next thing you know you've got like like a unabomber rest in pieces um uh <laughs> thing on the wall like that like connecting all the dots yeah. and you're kind of like your own like story conspiracy Rust call realness in a way, because yeah 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 inventing a, a story you know like you're inventing it and 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 that inspires me because it's 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 like a puzzle so I like building elaborate puzzles when I write and mm -hmm. there's easter eggs everywhere and little little things I like I like I like I like it being like a magic trick. I think that language is a magic trick in a good way. Like, like it's, 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 it's entertainment. And, and so, so, so it, it, language can be pleasurable itself. Like the act of having a conversation or like in plays when you're, when you're laying it all out, it really feels like a million puzzle pieces that you get to put in there. So I really, really, really spend years researching sometimes before I even start a project. Even this one man show musical thing that I'm writing right now, Charlie Clown, I I spent uh, a good time like researching and thinking about it before I really built it. And the whole thing is constructed very much like a puzzle. Like it's mm -hmm. all this like magic trick and sleight of hand just with language. And and, and it's very fun for me like that. I, I love... I love putting that much craft into something because even if the audience can't see it, they're aware that there's something else going on. They're, 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 you can feel it. You can feel when something is undergirded and supported with, with you know, that you can tell the difference between Lord of the Rings and <laughs> the new Star Wars movies. Ooh, you can okay. tell the yeah, difference totally when can. someone has crafted has has built the craft in the world and really done their homework versus yeah. when somebody is going, let's hit these plot points and fit a story onto that. Eh, no. Two questions. Are you a gamer? Oh my God, I recently am. Okay, cool. Okay. I can tell. <laughs> I so the way you're... I'm a huge gamer since like I, middle. I'm a I big. I never one. had video games growing up, but I would always just oh, okay. like hang out at my like straight friends' houses and like watch them play video games. And then yeah. I started getting into <laughs> Nintendo Switch. Oh my God. Are you, playing Tears, the, are you playing Tears of the Kingdom? No, I haven't Zelda? done that yet. Okay. I'm working on Diablo 4 right now. Oh, now work. I with, another, with another straight friend. So we have an Xbox. Isn't that fancy? Wow, oh, I don't even throwback. have an Xbox. And <laughs> I'm so wow. excited. I'm. It's like a whole new world to me, video gaming. I'm like, I was like such a... I studied like theater and everything with like this monastic devotion and I mm -hmm. and like, even like writing I'm like I get really intense into like my own world and then I like come up for air and I'm like what like video games look at these human I feel like Arthur Weasley like I am a <laughs> I am Arthur Weasley you're like, like you're like the muggles are so interesting let me play that literally games. literally yeah. I'm like have you heard about this stallion named Megan <laughs> oh like, that's it because like, yeah, anyway. there's a lot of storytelling with great like when you talk about I just love how you're talking about laying the groundwork and laying the foundation and one of the things I've always loved about video games and being like the girl that does it in a room full of you know uh straight men uh it was always cool to me was like the storytelling aspect right or like what's the world that they're building what is the point of it and then the fact that it sometimes you're doing these things and you don't know where it's going to go or how it's going to all fit together but it does and you know when it works but having let me tell you my observation because that's really astute and i'm gonna yes but you mm -hmm. um the yes but me the storytelling is like it is the world building is really cool in video games yes. it is yeah. really cool visually whatever the stories mostly suck 
because it's a oh, bunch yeah. of quests. Naughty it's dog. a bunch of That's quests. That's why the ones that stand out. And amazing. here's the thing. Here's the thing. Me coming from the writing world, coming from the, the drama world, and then all of a sudden, you know, 30 years later, being like a, discovering a video game, I am seeing the effect of crappy Hollywood writers who grew up playing video games and not grew up doing their homework. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. you, you are like not studying great writing. You're, you're, you're studying great video games. Like there's so much, so many things on television and in movies now that are basically like, get the quest to get the object and, oh, go to this person for this side quest. Like they, we're just filling time in television writing mm -hmm. now, instead of yeah. telling a really great story. Cause there's, cause that's what video games do. They, they, they're they just a bunch of little side quests, you know, because you have to. Some, some, but some, some like, like Zelda growing up, the storytelling was about someone coming from nowhere and being born into like you're, you you know, create a family and a tribe and it's like a thing. And then the Naughty Dog games like The Last of Us and, you know, are so story. Like To me, sometimes like I would... I would read books, but then it was so nice to escape in a game as well, like the, that I felt was very good narratively and really drove the thing. And I think they stand out. And I think that's why we talk about the specific ones that we do, like with Naughty Dog or like Zelda or like things that are like much more story driven and stuff like that. But yes, as a whole, we especially when it comes to gender and uh, all sorts of there's all sorts of problems in gaming. Uh, but I do think when it's good, it's good. It really lands. And it really it just made me think of that when you were talking about laying the groundwork for something and how I think they're achieving that somewhat, especially in some games nowadays, just yeah. covering the basis. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think you can never do I think you can never do too much research because you never know yes. what you're going to discover, even about even if you're writing about yourself, like, you know, like I I. I I'm not inspired by myself. Like I'm like, why would I ever? Why would why would anybody want to write about me? I'm boring, but apparently not. Um, no. And uh, but I'm but inspired like, so by for, you, Charles. Yeah. You. <laughs> so so I'm like so 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 like even when I'm writing about myself, I'm like I need to find the patterns that that m make this about something bigger than myself. Like I, that's very important to me when I'm doing this work because. I think there's just so much megalomania in this industry. And I find that really disheartening. I'm not in, like, I want to, I want to do something for other people. Like, I don't want to, like, I, you know what I mean? Like, so I think find your purpose, find your why and follow your bliss. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like you, that's, that's important to me. It's like, what's the why, why are you doing this? Why are you telling that story? Because no matter what story you're telling, it's going to take years. It's going to take forever to get anything produced like or or to get yourself on stage so like i think having if you're an actor or a writer like find a why that's more important than your own self-image or whatever you know like find find something bigger than yourself to that's to, also to fight for that's such because a good it'll exercise. inspire you and keep you grounded in this industry <laughs> That's such a good exercise to go through, like in general, but specifically, like I'm in the middle of writing out like the written part of this pitch deck for my book. And like, you know, of course, Sarah is helping with me because she's brilliant and she's the pitch queen. Um, but <laughs> like it, the part of it that's like, why now? Like, why are you doing this now? What is the thing that like makes this thing interesting and happening? And why should we make this is so hard because like my answer is like because I want to. <laughs> yeah, but of sometimes, course, of course, there's more to it. But like, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, from you genuinely, you know. Yeah. Well, and it is, like, but it's it's also just like the connection. the the layers of right. Well, it's the connection and it's the layers of of getting those pieces out, which is kind of what what we were talking about the other day, where like what comes first, the script or the pitch deck. Um, and like in doing that exercise of writing out the why now and the why should this get made, I had 10 different new ideas for the mm -hmm. actual script itself. So like if you can do it's that like finding the game in improv, it's like once you know the parameters, all of a sudden you're right. coming up with like all these ideas. And it really does. I, I've done both where I've written like we were talking about this, Ed, where yeah. I've written stuff before and then made a pitch deck. But now I've started to flip it where I make the deck first. And then it's all laid out and it's almost like, wow, if I hadn't made this, I wouldn't have had this idea just come out of nowhere because I'm already on the laying the groundwork for this, this thing and why it all matters and how it all comes back and culminates and stuff like I, that. I think it's yeah, really cool. Well, and also to what you were saying, Charles, like, I'm wondering if this is a practice that we can put, we collectively as humans, but also the three of us, 
Mm -hmm. um can put into put into play in our daily lives like why do this like why this and answer that question of the why for ourselves all the time you know like am I going to go out drinking tonight with friends why okay well if you're trying to like stop drinking so much then like maybe this isn't the answer for you and like just kind of implementing that within like your own personal reason and intuition and like outside of using it for professional reasons um do people not do that because i don't I, I do that all the time i'm like <laughs> what is the why why am i doing this like what's mm. my motivation you mm. know it's, i'm so no, i'm such a yes person like if you ask me to do something i'm probably gonna say yes <laughs> yeah, and without a why just yes yeah. just no really no why there's very few times where i'm like why should i do that it's just kind of like yeah cool let's do it i'm so no, down i don't for mean like, like all the time I don't mean don't like weigh every little decision, you know, like leave room for serendipity, babe. I of mean, course. like, what is, what is, Always. what is motivating you for the big things in your life? Like your mm -hmm. job, your work-life yeah. balance kind of right. things like that's, that. That's Hold kind like of what the, your fitness journey that's kind of what or, I'm what asking. A, or not, you know, like whatever, what is your why? Well, right now it's a not, but, but yes, like I, I hear what you're saying, <laughs> but that's kind of what I'm asking is like, like, I don't know if other people do this, but for me, like, I don't. I don't know what my purpose is. My purpose, as far as I know, is that I want to create as much as I possibly can before I'm dead. And, like, there's there's this really great Jamie Lee Curtis quote that I think I've used a couple times now where she's being interviewed and she says, like, I had this realization when I turned 60 that, like, I still had all this creativity left in me and how sad would it be if I died and it didn't get out? And I heard that yeah. and I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> well, here we go. <laughs> That's like, that's how I've lived and thought since I was a kid. I was like, well, I'm, I'm, like I'm going to die. Like, I'm going to leave something behind that I'm Same. proud of. Well, and it was just hear it was I, just hearing that articulated because like, I think I, that's how I function where I'm like, from a very successful idea. person too, to right. hear them articulate that. I think it's very, that's very, um, I see you kind of energy. We're like, oh, okay. She gets it too, no matter what her life has been like and the success she's found exorbitant success, um, you know, at a younger age and, and has a legacy fam. She gets it though. It's still like, we need to create and connect. And I think that's cool how she verbalized that. That, yeah. Yeah. that principle has honestly probably cost me in my career mm. financially, but it has changed my life creatively and, you know, and career wise. Like it's uh, like, I've mm -hmm. always, I've always followed that. I'm sure my, my mic is like, you're is, fine. Is having a moment. <laughs> Mine it's like off, off camera, Sad. but it's a big like ball. A, remember the snorks, that eighties cartoon where they would be oh, like, yeah. Ah. Like, yeah, snorks. I'm not with this snorks or something screen. like that. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. There. Yeah. We well, and, and okay. I, I, what well, I'm saying on, is like, on. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. So, okay. Fuck, fuck. I lost it. What was I talking about? It was so Jamie Lee Curtis. Damn it. Damn it. Creating things. Always in Crazy. Your life. Oh, oh, yes. it's cost me. It's co <laughs> there we go. It's cost me a lot because like when I got to New York, I was this like machine. It was, I was this tight bodied dancer twink, like for the chorus. And like, I'd spent my whole life working like that. And I had no, I, I only had these little like outside bits of creativity, like on the side. But I was right. like, I was like, I don't even know who I, I, who I am right now. I feel like I've been training like a Shaolin monk since I was like eight. And now I'm supposed to like be myself. And I'm like, who the hell is that? Like, what, mm. uh, like, what, what is this? And I was like, well, you know, I've always had like a side project of like creativity. How can I keep that going up here in New York where I have no money? I can't like get people in a room. I was like, well, let me try writing. What was the, you know, let me start that. And I, or I, like, like, so, so that's how I became a writer was following that thing of like, what do I want to leave behind? And what do I, what do I actually value? Do I value the money I could get by being a chorus boy? Or do I value the creativity I can leave behind doing something that only I can do? And, and I, so I like, feel like I sacrificed a, a, like a potential career there. Cause I was in shows that were like supposed to go to Broadway and didn't because I was, opting to do things and going, no, I think I'm going to do roles that I want that are off Broadway that are more my speed and start exploring that out, out, exploring myself outside of what is most financially viable for me right now and taking a big risk and a longer term investment in myself than like a short term thing to just get hired in the industry. And I'm not saying that's the best choice or not. I'm saying that is the choice that I made because it all came back to Jamie Lee Curtis. 
<laughs> yeah, right. And I think, well, and you know, you're saying how like, I don't know if I like, quote unquote, like, believe in myself like that, but you do by all those decisions, you totally chose yourself every single time. That's fabulous. Yeah, maybe you're I not articulating. I don't want to say, as, like, I don't want to say I chose myself, myself, but I don't want to say I chose myself because you I did don't, though. I don't... You said I don't want to be a chorus person, and I'm going to do my own thing that I love, that things that I yeah, like. That's, that's awesome. Choosing yourself. It's more like that's choosing yourself. I think of it, but I think of it as like choosing my talent. Choosing but that is you. part of you. Yeah, but like I choosing myself feels like so like it's about me and like it's like it. it, it I don't it think be. about it like that. I think about it's, it like. But it's I've okay if this... it is. I think it's we like, have this okay. big, I think we have this really negative narrative yeah. around being selfish and, and being like arrogant. And yeah. I don't mean arrogant in like an, I'm better than everyone, but I mean, in the sense where you're like, you're like, I'm going to be selfish right now. And I'm going to choose these things for me because that's what I want. And that's what is best for me. And I'm going to put these yeah. decisions that I have been making aside, even though that might be the right thing to do. Like if you would have kept going down that road, like, yeah, maybe you would have like all kinds of credits and theater and whatever, like whatever, but all of this creativity that you've created in the interim would never have happened. And so right. like speaking from my perspective, because feeling the same, like, are you happy with where you're at right now and what you have going on? Um, uh, yes. And going back to your theme, rich bitch, I actually had this realization on the reality show where I was like, like the week, like two days before the reality show started, Beyonce put a clip of me in her first TikTok. Oh my God, I like in front of her first TikTok ever included. I was like the first white guy. I was like, yay. <laughs> it was so like, it like blew up. And I was like, and people were like, you're on Beyonce's TikTok. You're on Beyonce's TikTok. And I was like, I literally this She's moment amazing. put a bagel on a credit card. I just put a bagel on a credit card. Like I am, I have nothing. And yet I like, have this kind of success. And then I, two days later, I go off and do this reality show. And I had the time of my life and I had this realization in the hotel room and I actually made a TikTok about it where I was like, I was like, you have become everything you ever dreamed of. You're just poor. Yeah. <laughs> so like, well, and, and, and that was... if money mattered to you, you probably would have gotten that too. But you mm -hmm. wanted to live a dream and be who you wanted to be. Right, exactly. And you did it. So like be poor and fabulous. Like well, rich is a mindset. Exactly. And that was the <laughs> exactly. point that that was the point that I was gonna that's make. Like if you're exactly. if you're happy, if you're happy where you're at now, then you made the right choice because all of those yeah. things along the way got you to where you are now. You chose and I, the bliss. Like, you chose your the path, the right exactly. path for you. And and this is like yourself. the parallel, the parallel for me here is like you know, I look at cancer as the best thing that ever happened to me because it set me on this trajectory to where I'm at now. If that didn't happen, I wouldn't have this book. I wouldn't have this pilot that I'm writing. I wouldn't have this billboard in Times Square. And so it's looking at all of the things that that kind of took you away from the path that you thought you were quote unquote supposed to do and looking at it from the perspective of like, well, I like where I'm at now. So where is it on that path that things went awry? either by my own choosing or otherwise. And can I be grateful for that and and like believe in myself in the in the sense that like I was selfish here and this served me and that and this is why. And for you, and Charles, it's because do you have the you experience decided, of like oh sorry. No, I was just gonna say and for you it's because you decided to not do what was like expected of you, I guess is the right way and create what you wanted to from a place of authenticity. And that has gotten you the TikTok situation, the Beyonce situation, the reality TV situation, the Charlie clown situation. And so like and, whatever those choices were got you exactly and, to where you are now. And that's good. And thank you. And the Charlie clown situation is me synthesizing mm -hmm. all the best things of that, because I was like, I, I was a dancer because I loved it. I love, and I don't have the body for it. I don't have the yes, flexibility. Do. I don't have the feet. I don't have Jack, but I loved it so much that I just worked until I could do a split. It took years, but like, I'll never be able to do the crazy stuff. But like, I was a ballet dancer, you know, I did it. I majored in modern dance. Like I did it, you know, like, but then I left those things behind to become a writer because I thought that I could be something else and I only was dancing in shows like I wasn't keeping up with class I was just like I'm just gonna dance in shows and so my skills have depleted and then the pandemic they've gone but I'm like and I gained a lot of weight because I really frankly wanted to and I actually say that in Charlie Clown I'm like why'd you get fat because I fucking felt like it I'm like I have bigger priorities now than being a fit dancer I'm trying mm -hmm. to change my life and better it and so this I'm I'm on a like 
very healthy, very easy, like weight loss journey, just because I'm back dancing again, because that's a part of me that I love. I didn't like how, how much fitness like messed with my head and made me like mm -hmm. so self-conscious. But I got rid of that by being a fat, sexy bear that the whole world loved. And I'm like, yeah. great. <laughs> still, I mean, still gorgeous. I always, <laughs> sometimes I see those like before and after fitness pics and I'm like, you should have stuck with the before. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I, so I have a whole song in Charlie Clown that's like, it's there where I'm like, why'd you get fat? Cause I fucking felt like it. Why'd you get fit? Cause I fucking felt like it, but it's clever than that. It's like, I won't give it away, but it's clever. But anyway, but I'm like, I'm like, it doesn't like, like, so, so this whole thing, like you said, I did go on this whole journey, but I'm trying to bring it all back holistically now. I'm like, the world knows me as a comedian. I know me as a musical writer and like super trained actor. I want to be a trained dancer and actor again. Like I want to be a writer. I want to synthesize all these things in one piece. So it's, it's a very important story. It's a very important creative thing for me that I'm doing right now of trying to like meld it all together it, mm -hmm. in the way that the world sees me and what and and meld my world as like a performing machine and a writing machine like right. all in one you're and, trying to meet yeah. all those parts those facets of you and but them. i never could have done that if i hadn't followed uh my heart and my and my learned how to trust my gut and and just keep following that and yeah. going like i don't i don't know why this is the right decision but i know that it is and yeah. that will become apparent you know, that's something that we talk yeah. about. And what I was going to say is that's something we've talked about so many times, whereas when you go against your instincts and your gut, whatever your gut is telling you, that's always when you find yourself in a space that you're not healthy in or happy in. It's always when you follow that, even if it on paper doesn't look like it makes sense yeah. to someone else, it makes sense to you. Go for it. Even you know? with relationships, trust your, trust your yes. instinct. Trust your first oh instinct God. about that person. Ugh, I'm yeah. the your first worst impression, at that. Your first instinct. instinct. Just trust it. You don't have to, you don't have to explain it. You can just go, there's something about them that's icky. I don't know about that. Just trust it. Cause I'm so bad at that. Cause I will also like beat that relationship to death. Like until oh, it is, no. there's just no viable <laughs> option for anyone anymore. And we both just have to run away. <laughs> It's why I've been single for nine years because I hate being in that headspace and I just like don't want to deal with it. It's like I'm so much better not being in that headspace. I have been single since Trump was elected. I'm like, I'm, is that I'm why? Like, well, is that why? No, <laughs> no, it certainly didn't help with the stress at, yeah. at the end there. But it was, it was, uh, no, I I needed a couple of years to be a hoe. I was like, I have not done this. I need to be a hoe. Mm -hmm. So I was because and I like did whatever I wanted. And then I was like, you know what? I'm ready for a relationship again. And then pandemic. And I'm like, damn it. <laughs> I actually and then you I couldn't got, do uh, either. Yeah, yeah I, I, got, I, uh, I got divorced. Like, and then the pandemic. And then I was single for the first time. And I was downloading like the apps. And I was like, wow, this is crazy. I because all through my 20s, I was the same person. And I was like, wow, wow, wow. So crazy this world. And then pandemia. Um, but then I met my boyfriend on a Zoom in a writer's room. So there you go. You know, you never know what's gonna happen. What but it's because and I he's went such into a that dream. He is. Such and but dream. it's because I I, you know, I did something that I was like, yeah, we're all we're all um and we're all gonna die. What's happening? Um, what can I do that's safe? Uh and that's when I created the pitch check business. But then also I was like, I'm gonna do this writer's room. I have no idea what to expect from it, but I'm just gonna do it. And I met like-minded people and therefore met him there. And it's like I followed my instincts. To something and I never would have guessed that in deep lockdown when everyone's like wiping their mail down I'd meet someone that I've now been with for three years it's wild oh, I, I miss wiping my mail down wiping um, your mail down wiping like, your mail and your groceries man. washing your groceries when they came in um I have a question <laughs> I we're talking about like following your intuition and like and like doing what is speaking to you do you think similarly to what we were talking about with like the circle of friends and the people who support you, that there are people out there who just don't have intuition, who just don't have that kind of instinct to do one thing or another? Because I mean, what is it like? There's there's like a certain percentage of people that when you say a word to them, they actually cannot picture it in their head and they don't know what it looks like and they don't. Or they don't that. have an inner monologue or something. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. Like, well, there's a couple of those things. So like, is that a thing? Like, stars, do some people just not have intuition? Listen, some people are dumb as hell. Never underestimate the stupidity of the American public, as somebody once said. Um, that mm. is, it, it. yes, I'm sure that there are people who don't have intuition, but I'm also sure that the, that the bigger truth is that most people stopped listening to it at a very young age. It was pounded and down. Fair. It was taken Trained from them. themselves. Right. You train, you have to, you have to train yourself 
to not listen to your, you have to train yourself to become a basic bitch, I believe. Yeah. Maybe that's not true, but that's just like, to me, it feels like, like maybe a lot of people feel like, feel, I, I, I feel stifled, you know, by, yes. by a lot of like, by not, when I'm not following my intuition, like I feel stifled and like, 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 like claustrophobic phobia stifled and so I can't so to me like I can't imagine not that doesn't mean that like I follow every instinct like don't do that don't I learned the hard way <laughs> don't do that <laughs> but like but or you know what I mean it. like 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 yeah. in big life decisions like you gotta trust your intuition more than like what you're supposed to happen you know it's like I actually love you this said that's isolating intuition. too right oh sorry go for it no, no, no. I was just going to say, like, the, um, I love this idea of, like, intuition and instinct. Um, and I want to tie this into what we're talking about with, like, what we should be doing, quote unquote, versus creating things what we want to do. I remember in whatever the hell year the song came out, but when Jewel had that song, Intuition, that came out, mm -hmm. it was, like, so uncomfortable to watch because it was, like, Jewel, who we know yeah. from, like, like, sorry, I real so to, like, yeah. you know, that. Gotcha. And it was so uncomfortable to watch, but then I just remember like sitting down and listening to what the actual words were. And she was telling us what she was doing, which is yeah. brilliant. Like there's that part in the middle where she's like, if you, if you've got something that you're wanting to sell, sell yourself, just cash in. And I will never forget the first time I heard that. I was like, oh, okay. I wow. see what you're doing. And so I think from that point on, I had this very conscien conscious like duality of like, there will come a point where I'm going to want to or be forced to sell myself just cash in. And I think I've actually gotten past that point with theater because like it was very much like being a person I wasn't and being trained out of being who I was. And now that I'm on the other side of it. It's like, ooh, okay, I don't want to go back to that at all. Like, especially, like, if I could, it would have to be in a very different headspace and capacity. But it was very much like the following my intuition once lockdown happened and realizing, like, I've been selling myself in the bad kind of way. Yeah, not not the sexy kind of selling yourself. Not That's the, the not good the kind. sexy jewel not, intuition. But the kind doll of way. is on the table. I mean, yeah, yeah. Table. Yeah, that's that's the good kind of selling yourself. I mean, I, was I listen. Say it's like, like isolating too, right? When you really figure yourself out and you feel, and you're in a room like in high school, and you're in a room full of people, and you have these big dreams and aspirations, and you feel everything, and you want to express things, and you know where you're being drawn to, but maybe people around you aren't that way, or they're not following their intuition. They're still searching and stuff like that. It can be somewhat isolating too, right? At, at yeah. some points, it's it is it is isolating because if you're like like if you're just gonna be like like your own your own fantasy star like you like, like if you're gonna like live a different choice you're than most people you're gonna have a lonely life but that right. doesn't mean it's not gonna be unfulfilling or exactly. like or that you're not gonna find like I have friends who are so supportive and love you but like I think you're gonna regret it more if you don't you know exactly yeah well because yeah. the people that have been around you in the version of you that you're trying to get away from only know you as that version and so I, then when there is that shift, then they tend to kind of like fall off. Yeah. And I've, I've had that a lot in my life because I'm like, there's a lot, I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm every woman. It's all in me. Like there's a yeah. lot that I, that I am capable of and that I do. And, but people only know me for exactly one thing. And they're so confused that I can do another thing. I feel like a gay L Woods. I'm like, I'm not a sorority girl. I'm a frat boy. And so like, I'm the, I was always the class clown, but I was also like top of the class and also the star of the show. And like, so I'm like, what? Like it's hard. And people are like, uh, like so, so like I, so most people only know me as like a comedian. And then like, there's this whole other group of people who know me for like this one thing. And then another people who know me for like this, for like being an actor and like, you know, like, but these are all facets of myself. And like, like right now I'm trying to bring it all in house. Ed, you said something that was, so important about being an actor particularly in theater where you were talking about like not being yourself and being trained away from yourself because I felt that too I feel like there's with actors particularly classically trained actors there is you are so taught to like to become anybody else like like and particularly if you're a gay man too like it's like I you think specifically have to. if you're a gay man yeah that's what you guys are there's like, there's not that many gay roles and there's not that many gay people, like really, like in theater there are, but like not in general, you know? So like you have to 
learn how to become everybody else but yourself. And like, I felt that I was like, I can't be myself to stay in this state. And I can't be myself to leave. Yeah, because the only way out is, is, is tossing it out the window is becoming like a, a theater person. That's the only way out of this. So yeah. like, I was like, if I want to do that, I still have to become, I will say somebody completely other than myself. I will say that I think not think I know that it's changing a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if you're just watching the Tonys, like, obviously things are different now. And I'm so grateful for that. Yeah. Um. Did I leave at the wrong time? I don't really care. But, like, it's it's just knowing what I was told all the time. I mean, we always used to joke about it, but it was a running joke in the industry. Butch it up. Everyone has I, said that to me. Everyone I was, has I was heard told that phrase. That non-stop non-stop and, and i was like i wasn't like i present very queenie now because i can right because that's now allowed in the world but uh, up until trump was elected i was told that all the time in the industry these are by like by like liberal people this isn't like like but yeah, they're like these were like my wanna... voice teachers and acting teachers and they're like, still part you... of the problem because the system is fucked yeah right, because exactly. they're still there but yeah. they're also were giving you frankly sound advice for that time because that right. was the truth they're like it's yes. part you of want, the thing if you want yeah. that agent to to have a meeting with that agent you better let them you better not let them know you're gay like if you want to walk into that industry party you better not let anybody know you're gay you can be whoever you want to be just not in just not, not you not just in not public you. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like it's like it was insane it was all I the remember... time and it's still kind of true it's just it not is. said anymore and like this didn't go away you're just not saying it out loud well i so, think like i think changing so... but yeah, you know. I know. But I think, I think, okay, two things. One, I remember it back in 2005, I met an actor at a house party of a neighbor who was like this tall, gorgeous, like long haired man. He had like shoulder length hair. And I was like, so obsessed with him. It was you, Charles. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Me with shoulder length hair. Oh I my know. God. Me, I, I wish. Like... <laughs> but um, he was gay, but he wouldn't say it. He wouldn't tell anybody. Mm -hmm. And there were people at the party that were, I was like, what's his deal? And they're like, oh, he's an actor. So, you know, he can't be gay. And I was just like, what? I'm an actor too, but I'm gay. I'm like, what? And then it wasn't <laughs> until I started like studying with people that I understood. And I, I don't remember that guy's name. <laughs> I don't remember who he is or who he was, but you know, it, it just always st stuck with me that like, if I wanted to work, if I wanted to maneuver in this industry that I had to somehow not be who I was, which is why I ran away and moved to New York in the first place You're, to yeah. be who I was. That then, is exactly the same thing that I felt. I was like, yep. you can't be you like in this industry. That's like, be yourself. You literally couldn't be yourself. Right. Like, they're no. speaking like, to everyone who is not like, like they're saying, be yourself to women and cisgendered men, like <laughs> heterosexual, straight, 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 men. straight people, straight. They're people. Say, right. They're saying, be yourself, but not you guys. You guys have to change. Yeah. But the so other you point always that I had to make about this is that I think that it is the least true that what we're talking about right now is the least true it has ever been. Not only because obviously casting in theater is changing and moving in a different direction. There's also more material for people who are not cisgendered, straight, white, etc. And so, you know, and this also loops back to creating your own thing. If, you know, Sarah, you and I have talked about this. If you don't see yourself in the projects that are coming your way, or you don't like the things that are coming your way, create something for yourself yep. that is more aligned with who you are. Yep. And As then a woman, tell... they would be like, she can't be funny. She looks a certain way. So I'd only get the girlfriend roles. I had zero backstory. <laughs> I was there as a, as a plot device or something. And so making, writing the D with Dr. Seeds was unhinged and weird and crazy not a porn but it sounds like one um it brought me on the map of comedy so and I'm booking so much more comedy because of that because I was like I feel like you're not giving me the opportunity and this was about five or six years ago but I felt like I wasn't given that opportunity because of it's all based on either whether it's appearance gender roles uh sexuality it's just bullshit I mean frankly we can't represent our, our country for real if we're not representing ourselves for real why be an artist and not and not be who you are it's absurd yeah. And it is part of the patriarchy and is part of the problem that's like you're constantly told you need to fit this mold, be that person, don't hide this part of yourself. And I'm and I'm you're right. There's a lot of work to do. There's so much work to do. But I'm glad that we're at least where we're at and we need to get better, though. We need to get better. There is. Sure. And, and to that point as well, I mean, you know, creating your own thing 
tells them who you are. Right. When when they're, you know, they see your headshot, they see your resume, maybe you have a reel, they're making assumptions about who you are. And so I I have found a lot of people behind the table. This is not true for everyone, but I have had the experience of knowing some people behind the table just have absolutely no scope of imagination whatsoever. And most of the time go into those spaces not knowing what they want. And so, you know, they always tell people like, just shine in your audition and you spend how much time being like, oh, well, you know, they're looking at this show that is this role and these are the parameters. And so I'm going to go in and do my best to do that. And blah, 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 played this and I got to do it. It's just. Right. But if you create something of your own that tells them who you are and what you mm -hmm. do, that makes their job easier. It makes your life easier. And then you also have this like tangible thing that you can hold and be like, this is mine. I made it. I mean, I, I think that's optimistic to say that it makes your life easier because I do want to be clear to the listeners that it is hard to make oh, your course. own stuff. Of course. It is also not very valuable for a very long time to make mm -hmm. your own stuff. So you are signing up for a crap ton of work, Yep. which is why but if you're, you're going to go that down anyway. that route. But you're going to do prepared. it regardless. And, it's, and when you put in the work, that's when you get results right exactly because if right. You don't put in it's hard work but it's so rewarding to me it's changed my life creating my own yeah, content absolutely i know it has but, for you charles obviously oh my god yeah yeah but it's like you you have to you have to like you have to you have to be prepared that like it's yes. not like like it's not all sunshine and rainbows no to, but it is not. but it is infinitely better to be yourself and like yes. it is it is even if that's hard it's still better it's still going to be less painful Right. Life's well, and that, hard, and that's but why what not I mean. Make it your life. Right. Exactly. And that's what, that's what I mean by it's easier. I don't mean like it's a walk in the park every day. What no. I mean yeah. is that like it's going to be a lot less heartache if you tell people how to perceive you instead of letting them like toss you around a pinball machine. Fill in the blank. I know. Cause then you start to feel mm -hmm. like, like just like a blow up doll. You're like, like, oh, like insert like, whatever you want. One like, of those, <laughs> one of those things outside of a, a car dealership. That's like, I'm a completely empty vessel. And like, I really thought that that was like important. You're like, cause you had to just be, you couldn't be, yourself until very recently it's like suddenly suddenly now it's profitable you're like oh great <laughs> like right oh um, the the so, queer the queers and the minorities are selling tickets let's uh put them on stage well, somewhere but like, like but you know what that is the reality in america so let it be the reality well, capitalism the exactly i agree so like so i think that yep. i think that if you're like a, a young artist starting out follow your instincts make sure that like if you're going to be an actor you are in the scene realistically portraying how you yourself would react if you were in that situation, because that is so much more valuable than being like this empty vessel of like things. Well, like I've done Shakespeare and things like that. Like I've, I've done all this, this, this other stuff, but really these days in America, it's much more about being your own personality and your own self. And that's something that's completely changed in my lifetime. And I think mm -hmm. that's really cool for a lot of people because it's going to allow individuals to shine and unique stories and most of the stories that are being told are very contemporary these days they're just contemporary america so you can what? be yourself as yourself in a script about contemporary america and also I actors can yourself. bring actors can bring anything to any role too like even if it's like a role that's been done 15 times like you're saying bring yourself to that role that makes it different and unique no matter yeah. what it is yeah. well and this you is really also can do that i love doing that as an actor i do a uh, an international acting class where we act with a lot of people from Ukraine as well that are on like um, hiding out and everything. And we do it virtually and it's magical to play with them and play these roles that we've seen before, but like we're bringing ourselves to them and they come out completely different than you could imagine. And I think that's like, that's such a, that's such a beautiful thing about art is that no matter what you're doing, if you're bringing yourself to it, it becomes something so much more and so much um, believable and incredible because that's it Charles is like tapping into who you are and bringing that to anything that you do that's what makes it real that's what makes it uh tangible well people. and this is this is also kind of like a good a good kind of like partner to the conversation of social media I mean yeah. I hear all day long dealing with like social media people all day long you know oh what's trending what what sounds are trending what hashtags are trending what's trending what's trending what's trending what Okay, like I understand the want to do that because you get the dopamine hit of getting like a bunch of followers and views and all the other things and whatever. But like half the time that you're chasing trends is a waste of time. Mm 
Mm. because you're not creating from your authentic self. You're not creating from a place where you are going to shine through in the end. And if we're talking about this in the conversation of sales, which is what I've been doing for the last forever, um, the people who follow you because of a trend are not going to buy from you because they're following you for the wrong reasons. So like this, to me, what we're talking about is about being yourself and bring something to the role and create your own thing is stop creating for the algorithm and start creating for you, you know, back to what we were talking about at the beginning, like who are you and who do you want to create for that is a version of you? I yep. think it's, it's such a conversation. Like I, I always think art is a dance between the artist and the audience, like even a painting, it is a conversation. Mm -hmm. And you always, so like you, like, like we were saying earlier, nobody exists in a vacuum. So you can absolutely, absolutely start out following what you want, but also watch those numbers. Cause you'll see if this, are people responding to this? I've got customers who are responding to something that I have organically done. Let me do that as well and also let me keep doing things for myself but like you you still have to exist in society you can't be like so like start out following your instincts and then see which instincts like in your art or whatever people are picking up on and right. then go well that's what i was wanting one of the things that i wanted to do anyway i'll just keep doing that and that can even be like what you are as an actor what you write about what you social media about like it can be anything it's just like like always start from a place of following your instincts and then mm -hmm. see how society is responding to that if you're an artist because like we we do kind of have to run ourselves like businesses these days like of course. yeah it's, i mean yeah. the social media of it all kind of like dictates that we do in a sense yeah you know especially if you are you know the three of us trying to like make things and get shit done there is a component of it that is very much like data analytics marketing sales what are you putting out there? What's the conversation? What's the story? What's the puzzle? What are the pieces mm -hmm. of the puzzle that you're putting together? And, I, you know, and, and I think that creating that like a monolith also is very dangerous too, because then yeah. you're kind of like cutting off your nose to spite your face, you know, where I, and I'm thinking specifically of like your TikTok, Charles, where like, you know, you had all the Jennifer Coolidge stuff, which you still do, but then you like break off into all these different series. It's still you and people are still following you for the right reasons. And, and that's, and you've amassed huge numbers because of that. But I do want to say, like, once again, like, I think these things, they, there is a cost to them. I think I've, uh, uh, what social media algorithms love is when you do exactly one thing with endless variations, endless variations on only one idea. Like, mm -hmm. then people are following you for only that one thing. And they get the same thing from you every day. And that is your one little niche. The algorithms love that. I can't be boxed in okay and i can't be chasing a trend like that i'm like so so for me i have always followed like well you know what i'm i'm frankly burnt out with that right now so i'm going to do something different or i just so i so 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 i get like lots of lots of likes i get lots of engagement but my follower count is lower than it should be for what you'd think like i have 15.6 million likes on tiktok alone mm. my followers are like 540,000 because I bounce around a lot and I do more than one thing, but that's what makes me happy. And I'm doing this as a tool for me, not to chase a trend and not to chase that. Like it is a conversation. I still have to You're respect doing it myself. For you. I still have to right. respect myself and my audience, you know, yeah, it's, it's that's both, amazing. you know? That's and good. so, so the people who do stick around for that, like, like that, they like that they never know what they're really going to get from me, but like, it's always going to be entertaining, but it's well, going to um, be you. And that's and, the right. whole point. And, I would it, also and be, it has cost me algorithmically, but like I, it's more worth it for me because like, otherwise, like you said, you're just chasing a trend and it will deplete you. Yes, it but will also, burn you out. But also like the, the point of that is chase of chasing trends in the algorithm, like algorithms change. I changed mine completely. I did a full 180 last year. I went from all the New York facts and fun facts shit, which I'd still love doing and might go back to a little bit into like the more book and everyday life of me conversation. Now my followership hasn't gone up. My likes have, my views have, and like all the data surrounding that is like good, but I've been stuck at like the same fucking number on social media forever. And I don't care because I create TikToks when I fucking feel like it about what I want to create. And I think that to have an audience that is curated, that will buy from you, that will buy your album, that will go see shows that you're in, that are doing all the things, takes a little longer than if you're just following hashtag trends and following sound trends. Yeah. Because then they're there for you and not because of the trend. Yes. If you have, if, you, if all you're doing is chasing trends, then you don't have 
followers following you you have followers following a trend as well yeah and yeah. like a lot and you have to think like a lot of these people who have like massive tiktok followings are like hot teenage girls dancing in their bedroom like you can't compete with that and you're also <laughs> like there's nothing there there's nothing that they can build off of that there's you're trying to if you are an artist and like you also have to like put your art out there like and it's going to be a different thing it's like you're not going to be a marvel movie babe you when you're an indie comedy you're not going to make the same numbers at the box <laughs> office that doesn't mean you're not a success like just keep going and keep creating because that's what you're trying to do. Like to me, social media is a means to an end. It's not the end in, in and of itself. No, it's of just Otherwise, one of the ways to to connect with people. You'll go, you'll one go of the ways. crazy. It yeah. makes you insane. Well, really. and also, it's made me insane. I'm like, I have to pull back. Because like, <laughs> Charles I'm, is like, I'm clinically right now. Clinical. Right yeah, I'm like, we are <laughs> pulling back. I, I need to like respect my art a little bit more. Like, instead there's of a, just there's an IV chasing. hole off screen that you're, you're like, just like eh. <laughs> but what's in it? Vodka or tequila? <laughs> yeah. Doesn't matter. Mm, Intervene. Um, <laughs> but um but yeah no I mean and I think I think to the point I don't remember where I've made this point before but like up up into a certain point I was like really into the whole like trying to be an Instagram fuck boy and like post like half naked photos of myself all over the internet and my ass was everywhere and like it was like sorry mom and dad um, even though my mom's not on social media, but it was like something that I was doing to try and garnish numbers because stupid silly me back in 2015, 16 thought that if I put that kind of content out there that people were following me and therefore when I did something else that like had a brain behind it, they would also be on board. And guess what? To no one's surprise, they weren't because anytime that I tried to, you know, like sell books or tickets or get people to follow or do something or sign up for something it was crickets it was like 10 people because I wasn't doing what the people who were following me wanted from me and I would get yeah, messages what they expected from to see mm -hmm. and, and so I try very hard not to be like too thirsty on any social media platforms because I would get and you know as a woman you know this and Charles of course is a gay man you know this but like the dms you get when you do stuff like Ooh. that are very different than the dms that you get when you don't <laughs> Let me tell you, I get thirsty DMs even for my comedy videos, and I'm like, hot damn! I See, have, those are good, a good ones, sign. though. I yeah. have the creepiest people in my DMs, and, like, I love it. I don't respond to any DMs, usually. Like, I really, like, I... But, like, if you send me a thirsty DM, I will read it, and I will enjoy it. I Like, I had this man who said... <laughs> This is, oh, a, no. this is a nasty one. Um, uh, Ooh, okay. Th this guy was, like, this, like old like midwest like veteran type guy like like strange old man pot belly like like american flag pillows on his like denim couch type he's like my name's charles too we should no he said my name's charles osborne too we should meet up and touch tips I, he said we should get naked and touch tips and i was like First of all, where do you live? Because I'm buying a know. place again. Can I film this? And like, like your name, like yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sleep with a man named myself. You know, <laughs> I really was considering. Does that I was count like, as sleeping is... with me? I was wow. like, this is quality. Your content, kidney would have right? been stolen. Your kidneys right. would be exactly. gone. But that's so like, cool. Yeah, is that I like that. I've slept with myself now? Like, <laughs> I, 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 what a story! What a story! What a story! What a story! What a story. I was like, he, I need to. He saved this. America. And... Hilarious. So, you know, he touched but, but tips. A lot yeah. of people are very sex to me, sexy to me in the DMs. And I like that because I need external validation. There we go. Because <laughs> I don't believe in myself. So I'm like, oh, you found me sexy? Like, her. <laughs> well, we here at I Want to Be a Rich Bitch are validating you externally. Yes, we are. We're validating you all day. We validation. Love... Your car, validated. Validated. What car, babe? I take I the bus. You're in LA. What the hell are you? Uh, Sandra Bullock is my Uber driver. We are really yeah. going down the speed bus in LA. It's... Oh my God. Yes. I don't yep. give a shit. <laughs> I, I got places it. to be and I'm poor. I will not be, I, I will not be held back. Well, but also I just think, I don't know. I have lived in New York long enough that I think if I would move somewhere else and would have to have a car, I would hate every second of it. I just don't want to live anywhere where I need to drive. Oh, I love having a car. Yeah, I love too. it. I mean, it's so convenient. Like, like I, I love the trains. I love just not having one here, but I love having it where I'm, when I'm somewhere else. I love yes. not having it here. I don't want it in New York. But anywhere else, yes, I love having a car. Love it's it. it's having the option. Like the right. bus system in LA is so I think, great. I think it's I'm great. speaking in terms of but. like living. If I would move anywhere else, like there's no way yeah, I'm moving I anywhere. Need, uh, I, need I have to get around. Let me tell you, LA is the perfect mix between a city and a suburb. 
it is everything that you want in a city, but it's on the scale and sprawl of a suburb. So you're like, Target it is, is a pleasant so experience. Like you just yeah. have a pleasant amount of density of population, but also strip like mall. a lot hey, girl. of- it is like a strip mall. Like most it of is. LA looks like a strip it's mall. It's a straight strip trees. mall, boo boo. Yeah, for mm-hmm. sure. Particularly the valley. You're like, mm. oh, the valley is a strip mall. Like, North the, Hollywood, the, valley, the Great Valley, strip mall. Yeah, yeah. Right, but I'm like, this is this is a nice place for me. I feel like I felt like I felt very trapped in New York. I was like, I don't have room to be myself or expand. Mm. I'm like, I was always like here. I'm like, I want to dance, take up space, and. Uh. Mm. So have you so, found? So when did you move to LA? And then what? And what possessed I, you to? And, I and, been planning, and what's the difference to you? I yeah. moved like in September, but I just like made it official, like changing my license and stuff like that, like really recently. But cool. um, uh, uh, I, I'd been planning to move for two years. I felt like I'd plateaued in the theater industry in New York. I was like, and I couldn't get ahead. I couldn't get any further ahead where I, where I was. Um, I was, I'd done like I was I don't know what that was my fifth off-Broadway show or something like that mm-hmm. and it was like the best reviews of my life like it was a drama desk nominations and like the uh, the New Yorker was like Charles Osborne is like Nathan Lane and like when I'm like oh my god like I'm like I'm like and I didn't have like an agent I couldn't get anybody to even respond to an email and I was like for writing or acting nobody Shit. would even respond to an email and I had like I'd been working for the biggest producers in town. So I had like their names attached to this, like, hey, blah, 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 recommended. I'm doing this. Here's what the New Yorker said. Here's me with a full page profile in the Boston Globe, like blah, 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 blah. I could not get anyone to even respond to an email. And I was like, and I booked the show off of like Actors Access, something that anybody can do. And I was like, what do I fundamentally expect to change? Mm. What do I expect to get better if I stay here? Because this is as hard as, as high as I can get on my own. And I'm still on my own pretending an agent's beside me to paraphrase. Don't stay in Epony. places you're not wanted. Yeah, I feel that. Yeah. I feel so that. I was like, if like, like I, I, I'm not even like, so like, I think New York is a very wonderful place, but it's a tough lifestyle. So like, if you are living there, your life there has to be worth it. And it stopped being mm-hmm. worth it for me because I just, there was just this plateau that I could never even get considered for. Like, I was like, I was like, I literally could not get considered for the privilege of someone's rejection. That's the way I phrased it. I was like, rejection would be a privilege right now because it would mean that somebody even opened an email from me. Yeah. Much less gave me an audition or read a script. And I was like, and then like the pandemic happened and and TikTok started taking off. And I was like, if I'm working for myself, I'm going to do that in a place I love with palm trees. Like <laughs> I can still book my my actor's access thing from LA. Like, yeah. please, like I can still do the same I level. I all the time in LA. That Whatever. I was doing in New York from LA. So like, I'm going back to, to Philadelphia in the fall to do, uh, to do a theater show. I'm doing a two person comedy at Bristol Riverside Theater. Um, uh the mystery of Irma Veth in October and like I'm like I'm still booking the same level of stuff I'm just doing it in a better lifestyle because those assholes wouldn't even consider me they were assholes yeah no which is so dumb who wouldn't consider you Charles consider Um, him I like I prepared my whole life for this industry and it was maddening because I was like I can I'm ready for rejection I can take rejection I can't take being ignored yeah I can't take not being Uh considered yes rejection i'm like, like i fought my fight my fight and i didn't make it damn let's cool have a if you don't like me but you didn't even look at me exactly then i'm like yeah. now i'm mad so like i was like so part well, of I part of charlie pretty... clown is getting revenge on all that because... well i was gonna say i think it's pretty safe to say that you're getting the last laugh here <laughs> Oh, babe, <laughs> just you wait, Henry Higgins. <laughs> I cannot wait. I'm so excited Henry for you. Henry Higgins, very good, yeah. He who laughs last, laughs best. So let's go. Laughs That's the hardest, for sure. Um, Y'all, Thanks. I think I think we're at a good spot to wrap, yeah, wrap dude, her up Charles, here. Yeah, you crushed it. Oh, thanks. I like to crush things. <laughs> Me too. Isn't that, right. like a, isn't that a fetish? <laughs> I'm totally. sure it is. Everything 100%. is a fetish. Like everything, everything is a fetish. Is a fetish. Everything. Yeah. This is a fetish. Uh, this is a fetish. Like who knows? Anything's I know. a fetish. There's, well, Anything. there's that. You just did that, but it made me think of like that trend on uh, Instagram Reels where like all these muscle guys are putting like pens between their pecs and like squishing oh, them to see like. See, it's, uh, it's universal. Oh. Yeah. Or like universal. the ones where like somebody like breaks an egg with like. They're, they're, they're like built different and you're oh. like it's an egg it's an bitch. egg I can do that. Yeah, I can do that. 
I know. It's made Although, even I chickens have to sit gingerly chick. on the egg. Like, right. They're hovering. <laughs> Eggs are meant to be cracked by little baby chicks, boo. Like, yeah, um, this also makes me think of that that whole thing. I love that we're like, we're done now. And now we're just and talking we really, about what, yeah. what can, how guys are I, doing. <laughs> um, the ones where like the guys with the big thighs are like squishing the watermelon situation oh, yeah, between totally their legs. Let me tell you, that I'm, was a lovely trend. I I'm was like, I don't know it. why this is so attractive, but like do that to me. But like do You're, it. Like, melon me, daddy. Yeah. <laughs> Love that. Crush me. Put my um, head but anyway, right Charles, there. it's been a it's been a delight to meet you. Um I I'm watched so a bunch of your too. Oh yeah, I watched a bunch of your TikToks. Love. Um, and I really am excited about your show. When does um so when can you just tell us when is the show coming out do you know i yet? And... don't know how okay. or what i'm gonna do i'm like i'm sending okay. it to some friends and like you're putting the puzzle the pieces you're i'm like the, i'm like yeah. i need to figure out where it's gonna be first because well you know, i'll be like... out i'll be out in los angeles in september so if it's happening anytime around then let me know so well, i'll be okay we'll, well, well we'll talk we'll talk Maybe I'll have to make a trip out if you're doing. Yay! Something. <laughs> Come stay in my beautiful bedroom. Okay, Yay! I'm down. Yeah. Let's all let's have a little camp. Let's trip. have a kiki sleepover. <laughs> have a kiki. Lock the doors real tight. 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 Um, tight. Um, all right. Yeah, that's I want to be a rich bitch. And Charles, you really, you really are Turn a rich it. bitch. <laughs> you really are. Just love your you. mouth to the bank's ears, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Say it. Right. Thank Say you guys it. so much for having me. I oh love my God, being of had. Um, <laughs> we all have like that, that in common. Yeah, we do. We do. Everyone, everyone was, everyone here was a hoe at one point. Mm. Listen, Put money on the table. I wish. If I wish, I I wish that there was money involved. I just slept my way to the gutter for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but a good story and a nice spot in the gutter. So. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I would like to procure the bag. I want to be a rich bitch. Penthouse doorman. Money, 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 money. Rich bitch. Hey, hey. give me that bag. Rich bitch. Yes. Yes. You're so rich. Uh, pay me. <laughs> 